Hi, this is the second in the series of creating eyelet lace with the help of polymer stamps. In this video, I'll actually be doing the stamping. So lots of hints and tips about stamping onto fabric. I'll also be heat sealing it and showing you that process. So let's get started. I'm going to put, because this is so thin, I'm going to put some white paper down. Um, just because I know if I don't, I'm going to completely mark my desk. And as this is permanent ink, I really don't want to uh, end up like that. So my pattern's just off screen a bit there, but you can see, I'm sure. Now this time, I'm going to place my stamp onto the uh, stamp mount with a little bit more care I think in that I've got an engraved line so I'm just going to try to line up the bottom of the scallop onto that engraved line I'm just get some of that excess ink off from when I was trialing so it's more or less on the engraved line. I do like, when I'm stamping on fabric, I prefer to stamp on the, a hard surface, not a spongy one. I know some people really like a spongy surface, but for me, that makes the line of the stamp that bit thicker. Whereas if I'm just using um, something hard underneath, it tends to keep a, an even finer line, which obviously when you're embroidering is really helpful. So now I'm just going to stamp. When stamping on fabric, don't push down hard. Um, the stamps that when I was doing the trial, I was just stamping like you think of stamping. But if you just set the stamp onto the fabric and just gently press, let it sit and soak into the fabric a bit. Then you can pull up and you have a nice clean line. Now you can, of course, get a second impression. It will be much lighter. Not always a bad idea when you're uh, embroidering. We just carry on like this. working our design. And of course, because they're clear, you can sit over the top of it and pretty much line it up. I mean, you don't have to worry about it being absolutely perfect because you are creating an embroidery anyway. But it really helps the fact that you can see through the, the um, stamps. Another thing that you can do if you're really, really feeling, oh, I want it absolutely as perfect as I can make it, is you can, of course, stamp out your design first or a repeat of it, and then use a light box and stamp over that repeat, which may seem like an awful lot of bother, but if it's something that's really, really important, it's a way of doing it. I've not actually had that much bleed through, which is nice. Don't put too much ink onto your stamp when you're working with fabric. And you see, I'm just following that line that of the removed thread. Now, many people embroider, well, embroidery on glay is recommended, it's usual to embroider it in the hand. 
that is you don't hold you don't stretch the embroidery uh, in the fabric into a hoop because you want the threads to be able to obviously move when you're creating your eyelets now some people aren't very comfortable with that and if you're not comfortable with that go ahead and use um, an embroidery frame or a hoop you may also find that if you're doing more of it as white work not um, eyelet work then using a frame helps you in that way Just going to check the length of this. I'll do a few more, I think, so it'll be the length that I'd like it to be, more or less. Although part of me is saying, "Oh, wouldn't this look nice at the neckline of a blouse?" Probably not very fashionable, but who can remember the Peter Pan colors? You used to buy separate colors, all sorts of lovely lacy colors, or is it just me being really, really old? <laughs> right, so that's the scallop part finished. Now, I went with that little tulip in the end. And again, I'm going to line this up. I think what I'll do is I'll line up the top of the petal with the line. That be easier for me? No, maybe it will be easier to just line the dot up. Okay. Then start again. So the ink that I'm using is um, you can't see it there. It's Versacraft, and this is really nice. Uh, so far, I've had great results with it um, on fabric. So long as you heat set it. And of course the colors, it's really entirely up to you. Um, what color you actually use. I do tend to like going with blue just because it, it feels traditional. Um, and I, they have quite a few different shades of blue. I also quite like working with um, a gray, but obviously that's not really any good for a camera. Now I could, if I really wanted to, I could pull another thread out to line up. Another way, um, if it's really crucial to you, is to follow the line and work a running stitch along your fabric. I'm really not too worried if this is a little off. Um, a lot of historical laces are just a wee bit off and a lot of them were stamped out. So it's not like um, we're reinventing the wheel here or anything. That clicking noise, I'm not sure whether uh, my microphone is picking it up. That is actually my iron heating up, getting itself ready to heat seal this.
If you've never stamped before, which I know a lot of textile people haven't, stamps can give a little if you push too hard. And that, if that happens, then you get a bigger line. And sometimes, um, like a blob as well. So you do have to be careful not to put too much pressure on. And the other thing is, it's really helpful to remember, is that most people do as I'm doing here, which is take the ink to the stamp. If you, as you think that you should do, just plonk into the stamp pad, you'll end up with a lot of um, ink up on the edges of the stamp, and that can then mark your um, fabric or paper or whatever you're stamping um, where you don't want it. Ooh, don't want to turn that round the wrong way. That would have been a spot the deliberate mistake moment. I really like that. I think that's going to be quite sweet. So I'll get the um, dot now. Normally, embroidery anglais is worked with a um, sort of more of a twisted thread, like a cotton embroider. So an embroidery cotton, it's got a little bit of a twist in it. Um, I think that this particular fabric is actually going to be better suited. Actually, I didn't line this stamp up very well on my block. I'm just going to line it up a little bit better to aid. In my placement, yeah, that's better. Um, yes, yeah, so. Using um, on this particular fabric, I think that using uh, an embroidery floss may well be the way forward. A stranded cotton. But I am going to try cotton embroider first. You see, I'm using the grid mark, marks on the block to help me to line everything up a little bit. And as I say, I'm still doing it by eye. I'm not sort of fussing over absolute perfection. Let's face it, my stitching isn't going to be absolutely perfect either, so... If you really, really, really hate what you've done and you're really out and annoyed with yourself, I have found that if you rinse the ink in cold water, don't use hot water because hot water is going to heat set it, you can usually remove the ink if you have not heat set it. So, for instance, on um, I've got a blouse that I'm doing in the uh, using the Elizabethan stamps that we've got, so that it's a little bit like black work, although I'm using blue thread. 
and I actually dropped the stamp block and left a lovely smudge on the front of the shirt. But I ran it under cold water and managed to get rid of the splodge so that when I then restamp over it, I don't think anybody will even notice. Always test with your chosen fabric, of course, that sort of goes without saying. Right, so there is our length of repeatable lace. And now the thing to do is it has to be heat sealed. Now wash, do remember to wash off your um, ink from your uh, stamp blocks. Don't, you don't need to use anything but some water. Um, eventually, uh, off of your stamps, eventually it will stain somewhat, but it's not going to be det detrimental to the stamps at all. Right, so. I have an ironing mat here, which has a pattern on it. So you're not going to be able to, well, you can see it better than I thought that you would. So I'm going to first iron from the back. So I'm using my iron set up at a really, at basically the hottest temperature that I know that this fabric will take. And that is how you should do it. You should always really, heat set by taking it as hot as your fabric can handle. And notice I'm pressing, not ironing. I'm going to make sure that that heat penetrates that ink and gets right in. Now I know that a bit more at that end. So I iron, I press from the back first simply because if there is any um, residue ink that hasn't dried that's not going to go on my ironing plate and I'll turn over and do the same on the front side. Now that should, in theory, be absolutely fine. I'm going to turn off this iron because this iron gets tremendously hot. You can feel the heat coming off it. So that's that. Now what you can do, if you want, is you can put a little bit of starch onto the fabric. Now this is completely, you know, optional. Depends on what you want to actually do. Um, I'm using some of our lace starch and a paintbrush, except that my paintbrush has disappeared. There it is. The lace starch is basically um, the same consistency as our Kansashi, uh, the same formula, sorry, as our Kansashi starch adhesive. The difference is, is that this is um, more liquid and you can dilute it even more. So, you know, go right ahead, dilute with more water if you like, make it go a little bit further. But something that I like to do, you see, I know that these scallops will end up being cut. So just painting a little bit of starch onto this will help to keep this um, fabric, which is quite fine, a little bit stiff. I'm going to press that again in a minute. And I turned off my iron, didn't I? Because I forgot that I was going to do this. So let's just get that iron back on to make sure that it stays warm. And as I say, you can dilute this even further. Not a problem at all. Mm -hmm. 
Always test it first, just like the inks. Make sure it's okay with your fabric. And then here, I'm going to add starch. Primarily, just on the bits that I know I'm going to be embroidering. Okay. I don't want a lot. I just want a bit to keep the um, fine threads under control. Um, you don't need to do this if you have um, a little bit of a heavier weight uh, fabric at all. Um, you can just use the starch after you've done all of your embroidery uh, to help keep the shape. But I do find it works quite well to do this in advance as well. So taking a leaf out of our ancestors' um, books, not a bad idea sometimes, I think you'll find. Now it does look, you can see, it sort of looks like the ink has spread, but it hasn't, it's just wet, so it's darker. say so it's really I've had great success with um, the sink so far really have it's just a matter of making sure that you heat seal it another thing that you can do um, with starch is if you pop it on a radiator in the winter you can get it to an almost dry state before you press there we go That's now got a little bit of body, which is helpful as well for the ironing. Sorry, just not the camera. And so, there we have it, all ready to be embroidered. Thanks very much for watching. I hope that you found this useful and helpful. And there's another two videos in this series, so if you click subscribe and hit that bell icon, you'll be notified when I upload the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.